local salvage yard trying to find something for Aaron's trailer. What do I spy back there? You see it? There's a Volkswagen! Hey everybody and welcome back. As you can see, we are experiencing lovely spring weather here in Indiana. And it's been this way every weekend for about the last five weeks. So today I'm going to jump on to a little project we purchased uh, just a couple of months ago. And I really want to get going on it. There's a little single wheel trailer buried under here. So we're going to pull that out and get started on that today because that's something we can do in this nastiness. So let's get that out of there, make a space for me to work on it under here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to back up some of this hoard here. That gives us a little bit of room to work even though it's a little wet in this area, we are at least under roof. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, well that's all wrangled out of there. And someone has welded, I don't know why or how this benefited anything, but they have cut off the original armature. Can't really see that very well, the way the sun is. There you can see it. So they've cut this off, it looks like, and flipped it. I think that these little tabs went down. I think they went the other way originally. So it's been cut. And again, I don't know why you would do that, but they've cut it, flipped the sides. I think this one used to go on the other side. So I think they have taken them, flipped them, so that the U-channel is... Actually, I may not have even flipped them because the U-channel is going this way on the arm and this way on the trailer. So yeah, I think they just, for whatever reason, wanted this hookup point to flip the other way. Weird. Anyway, I'm going to clean that up, pretty that up. I don't know how I'm going to remedy this. The height hooked up to Aaron's car is almost perfect. In fact, I may move these sawhorses out of the way and just make sure before I get to cutting on anything, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know if it broke and they just welded in to repair the brake. Looks to me like it's been cut, though. If you look right, get the camera to focus on it. Right here, there's a pretty nice cut line where that's been cut off. Again, not sure why that was done. But anytime you can buy a single wheel mechanism that's any shape at all for the price I got this one for, I'm, I'm going to buy it every time. So, and it's had a broken spring too. I am probably going to leave this repair alone because it will not show and maybe just clean it up a little bit because the board will be on top of it. You, you won't ever see that. And it looks to be pretty well strengthened there so I'm not going to try and repair that. So there's where we are with where that kind of needs to be. On a single wheel trailer to keep it from hopping they, they kind of want to want to jump in the back so you want to keep them either tipped past like a wheelbarrow. Imagine yourself hauling things in a wheelbarrow in your yard. Typically you have the the handles way up so if this is the wheel of your wheelbarrow the handles you have pulled way up. You either want them way up, which isn't real practical in this situation, or tipped slightly past level. And I think if we do that with this one, we're pretty close. Obviously we're a little low on air in the tire. So I may want to come up just a little bit. But that's tipped down probably about right. And you know, his car slammed. And it's, uh, it sits pretty low on the, on the wheel on the rear. So I got to make that, this system here, 
fit somehow into those bumper brackets. So I need to figure out if I want to come in from this point or if I want to come from the bumper mount out to pick it up. Hmm. Let me think on that for a little bit. I just put a piece of uh, plywood on there to see kind of how we are sitting visually. We've got the camera about level so you can see we're tipped down. I don't know, probably 20%. So it could stand to come up just a hair, I think. So let me raise those jack stands up just a little bit and get it up just a little bit higher. And again, we're going to we're going to raise the, the butt end, the tire end of it, up just a little bit too and put a good tire on it. So let me bump that front end up just a hair. All right, so I think that's about right. I need to go put a level on it to see where we are exactly on our gradient. But that looks to be about 10% to me, and that's about what we're running dads at. And we have found that that's about the pocket where mine sits where it's happiest and doesn't want to hop around. So that's probably about the right height. All right, here's what I have come up with, what I'm thinking, kind of the plan that I, I have in mind. Someone has boxed in uh, this piece here. And I think if I just clean this up a little bit, again, this is not gonna show because there's gonna be a floor over it. And then cut off uh, the rest of it from right here. That leaves us a little pocket inside here where I can run an arm, drill two holes through, and then I can make my armature come down and hook up to the bumper bracket on the beetle. And I'm probably going to have to either do an up and over. Uh, those brackets had like an up and over. It was kind of curved where you could flip it either way so you could come under and pick it up or go up and over. And for this one, um, I don't know if it'd be easier to go up and over or come under. Obviously, I have to make, make it longer. If I just cut it right here and try to put it up close to the car, that's not going to work. So we do need an arm here. But I think I kind of want to start with it fresh. So I want to cut... Uh, what they have kind of built there and kind of start start from scratch. I don't know, I'm really kicking it around. Probably overanalyzing it, and if I would just do it and get it done, it would be fine. I don't know if they, I can't figure out if they've shortened it. I think this had an arm that went down and angled down, I think. Obviously, I'm going to have to bridge this gap here. So I can do that twofold. I can taper this in a little bit, and I can bring this out a little bit, and that'll kind of evenly distribute the pressure. All right, let's get those cut off. So that's the mess I'm going to cut off right there. Because this point, this part will show, so I definitely don't want this garbage kind of showing. The boxed-in portion, I think once I clean it up, uh, it'll be fine. I don't think anyone's going to notice that. We're going to have uh, boards on top of it. I think it'll be fine. Plus, if we paint it up black, it's really not going to show. I'm going to go through a couple of bits uh, getting through this, though, I bet. Yeah. All right. Let's get those cut off of there. And then uh, clean up kind of this mess down here kind of see what we're working with for sure. I, don't, I want to make sure this is strong. I don't want it falling off on the road. And uh, get some armature made for it. It looks like there may have been a repair here as well. Kind of hard to tell if that's factory or if that was repaired. All right, get a cut off of there. One of the other things that someone did is put these kind of heavy duty plates down here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is welded in. And that one is welded in just to add some weight. So it keeps that trailer wheel from hopping when you're going down the highway. If you have just a little bit of weight in it, it helps a tremendous amount. So they've just got those plates welded into those holes there.
Well, I got that far. And killed my favorite tool, the Roto Zip. All right, so basically I decided to go ahead and take that box off of there. I kind of cleaned it up on this side. And I just, I don't really like the way that looks. And what they've done, they've actually cut the arm off. I think I might've mentioned this in a previous video. It's a couple days later since I first started the project. They cut this U-frame uh, off uh, up here, basically just flipped it the other way and then patched it over so that it laps over. If you're gonna be able to see that or not. It just, uh, no, you can't see that. <laughs> I swear that's what they did. Might be able to see it a little better on this side. So I decided to go ahead and take that off and you can actually see where the weld, tip you down here in the light, where the weld behind there, you can see the rust where the original frame is. I got into it a little bit right there, but I think I can get that out. So right now what I'm trying to do is just bend it back and forth. I cut into this weld. I got all the way through on the other side and then just kind of weakened it on this side and then I'm wedging in uh, this quarter inch steel piece and trying to drive it out. Let me stand that back up. So I weakened it to the point I could get a pretty good sized screwdriver in there and then got that split kind of opened up and then just took this quarter inch and use it as a pry bar. And so we've pried off most of it, just got to get the rest of it off of there and then jump to the other side. So let me get started on that. All right, so I think I've got, maybe not. There we go. Most of that off of there. I'll just clean that up. That actually looks really nice and it already has a hole in it where I'm kind of planning on putting an arm in there. Now that center piece, you can't see anything, can you? This piece they've got kind of in here, I can't tell if that's actually welded in there. You might be able just to hit that and get that out. If not, I'm gonna probably have to grind all that out of there. Got a little, this is a little bent here now where I pried on it. Hammer that back straight. I don't want that to be kind of tweaked there. And I got one more side to get off and then I went to the salvage yard, and so I'll patch in that video right here. We're at the local salvage yard trying to find something for Aaron's trailer. What do I spy back there? You see it? There's a Volkswagen. Gotta find something that's kind of heavy duty thickness wise. There's our beetle back there again. that leaf spring. Holy cow. What that's off of. So that's our salvage yard high haul, if you will. And that's the additional plate. I don't know what I'm going to use. I'm thinking about on, on my single wheel trailer, it's something like this, only it's quarter inch thick. So I've got four of those pieces that are all the identical thickness I was looking for more of those because that's really good strapping material to build stuff out of but I'm going to straighten those out and maybe if I marry two of them together and weld two of them together I think they'll be uh, be pretty good let me show you what's on my trailer so this is my single wheel and you can see this is quarter inch steel and it's just a single piece that goes back and then bolts 
to the trailer there. So we're gonna do something, hopefully something similar for Aaron's trailer. Kinda wanted to mock that up to just make sure those flat pieces I got would be uh, good. <laughs> it's like it's made for it. Look at that. Look at that bend. Perfect. Just wish I could have found four that were bent exactly alike. But I have two that are bent exactly alike. That one and the one on the trailer. And then I have these two. And we can make them look like those other ones. Couldn't have bent that more perfecter if I'd have wanted to. And that'll come in all the way. I'm working on getting that piece. I got a piece in there that I'm trying to get out. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Just thought I'd mention real quick. I stood up a board off of the back right here. So I just kind of took a board and stood it up. You want to be able to open the deck lid without hitting it. On my bus, when you put the trailer on, you can't open the deck lid to check the oil or anything like that. So I like to be able to open a deck lid. Pretty much straight up about seven inches. So y'all remember that for me because I'm going to stand this thing back up and I'm going to forget. All right, so finally I worked that guy out of there. And now we're just down to the frame. That looks much better. Let's see if our little piece fits in there a little better. Like a glove! Kind of hard for you to tell in the picture, but I've just squared up off of this overrider on the bumper to make sure that I'm roughly the same distance. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I would like it to be exact, as exact as I can make it given the tools I have to work with. But I'm trying to 90 degree it right here. So measuring from our edge there should be pretty close on each side. So I think we are squared up where we need to be. Let me step out of it here. Just have it sitting on jack stands. We've got everything cleaned up. Obviously, we're going to clean up the frame as well, but I mean, as far as the, the welds and all of that kind of junk, that's all cleaned up. And then I just need to make the bracketry. So probably the next thing I'm going to do is put the bumper mount or the uh, bumper bracket mounts on, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do for the arms. Getting there. Worst part was getting all that junk off of the inside. We'll take the scrap that I took off of it inside here in a bit and weigh it. See how much weight I took off of it. And I may drill some holes in these plates just in case they get water in them. I don't want them to hold water. I thought about taking them off, but because they add some weight to it, I'm going to just probably leave them in there and maybe drill out some holes. I think once we have a floor in it, they probably won't get wet anyway. But All right, let's put those brackets on. I just want to quickly touch on what I'm doing for brackets. So dad just had this aluminum and he built his out of this and he had just enough left. In fact, we only have a tiny little piece of scrap left over. This one is kind of bent a little bit, so I'm not going to use it. But how this system works is if you'll notice on the L, one side is a little bit longer. This side's a little bit longer. This side's a little bit shorter. This is our template. So, let me go get a gum, uh, bumper bracket and I'll show you real quick. All right, so I've got you up on a tripod. This is our, our bumper bracket that goes back to the car. It would bolt to the car here. So we have this space here to work with when you're uh, trying to figure out a plan to put one of these on a vehicle. So this is our template. So at the top of one of my plates, I'm going to weld, or sorry, drill two holes at the top, and then there'll be a third hole down here, and it will just go over. So once I've had, once I have those holes drilled in there, 
again, my long side is going to be what the trailer bracket hooks onto. Okay. And then this is just going to go there. So that's going to go there. My piece that has my holes drilled in it, for right now we're just going to use our template, is going to go like that. It's just going to sandwich it in there. Obviously, I'm going to be putting the long one on there. So we're going to be more like that. Just making a bumper bracket sandwich. And then again, our trailer pivot will go like that. So for Aaron's car, we're going to make those go up. This L go up. You can turn the bracket the other way and make it go down if you want to. But for our purposes, if we come in pretty much straight off of this piece here in, we can make that bracket go up and it should fit perfect. Oh, yeah. I think other than nipping that little corner off, drilling that last hole, and we'll drill a hole through the top right here, wherever we figure out where that U-bolt for the trailer needs to go. It's just sitting on the car. I got the brackets made up. These are going to be the arms that go back to the trailer. So they'll bolt in right here and then come through the little trailer you bolt and this actually came with the trailer. So I just need to weld, look the sun is killing us here, I just need to weld those two pieces together meaning the pairs. One strip of that certainly was not going to be strong enough so I put two pieces together and just kind of I just cold bent them, didn't heat them, just cold bent four pieces identical, uh, as identical as I could get. And, and then after I've got them all welded up together, I'll make the ends all be the same, and the fronts all be the same, and we'll be good to go. On the passenger side here, I uh, kind of broke my own rule. Typically I make the thing I'm making for a specific location, specific side of the car. But I made the mistake of setting my my pattern up and drilling the holes exactly like I did that one over there. Uh, see a problem here? That one's on top of the bumper. That one's underneath. So I have a little gentle persuasion here in the form of a two-ton floor jack. And we are going to put it under there and jack up the car with this side of the bumper. I think the blade itself is actually bent, and if you stand back, it actually does kind of look like that side sitting a little bit low. So, let's see if we can't just kind of nudge it just a hair. And we're just going to spring back just a little bit and make sure we're clearing that fender there. Oh yeah, we're good. So I'm going to go just a little bit past. where we're wanting it to be. There it moved. You probably couldn't see it because I was moving the camera, but I'm watching, I'm watching it right over here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let it down. And again, it's going to spring back some. So you kind of have to over correct it because the metal will pop back where it kind of wants to be. Let's see if that gives us anything at all. In there. <clears throat> all right, we're getting close. We're really close. So we are under, and I have went ahead drawn the line on there, I believe. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we go ahead and cut that, I think we're gonna clear. Sweet. Well, I've made up those arms. There's one of them, and over here's the other one. And I've got that one just kind of sitting in its little pocket there. Given the equipment I have to work with, the limited uh, no plasma cutter, none of that kind of stuff, no fancy welder, 
this is the best I can do, given what I have to work with. And uh, I think those look pretty good. Not too bad for just making out of the salvage pile. So all I have left to do now is to drill two holes uh, down here on the straight portion of that. And then drill a hole where that little swivel goes. And those are all set. So the holes that were already drilled into the trailer are just a little bit too close where I can't really, unless I weld a nut on the backside, I can't, uh, when you put the, show you what I mean here. It's pretty obvious when I stick it through there. Ain't got no room. So I can't put a nut or a wash or anything on the back. So when I designed uh, the holes for the arms, I designed it so that those would come back just a hair uh, past that, the hole, and kind of line up where the where the trailer kind of starts to to make its bend. Get that to focus there. So where the trailer kind of makes its bend, this kind of the arm kind of morphs its way into there. And I think That'll work out okay. So we need our first one there, and then after we get that first one drilled out, I'll bolt it up and then drill the second one in. But I was I was thinking I'd be able to use those existing, and that one's actually not even uh, drilled out all the way. But I was thinking I'd be able to use those. I just don't. There's not enough room there for me to get anything solid on the backside. So we'll just do it this way. Aesthetically, it looks better with the curve coming right off of that anyway. So I'm getting ready to put this in. Remember that piece of metal I cut out of there? Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> because my uh, my arm is a little bit narrower than the gap. So what I'm going to do is make it favor uh, kind of the top portion. Let me get that kind of... Because I think the pressure is mostly going to be on this top rail. So if I make it favor the bottom, it's uh, the, the weight of the trailer is going to be pushing down. Uh, so I think if I pull it up and favor the top up here with my bolt holes rather than trying to center it and put it in the middle. Uh, I'm going to push it as far up kind of like that as I can. I think that's going to be the strongest way to do it. So plus that'll put my bracket uh, down there kind of where it needs to be because this stands off a little bit. Move that to where I want it here. So when I pull this up that also brings that end up and puts us closer to there where we need to be. So that's what the plan is. Just wanted to point out really quickly, you notice there's no indication of any break or anything there. Yet you see right there, zoom in just a little bit, it appears to have been welded from uh, the backside, but there's no indication on either side that there was ever any break when you look on the inside. That's just oil where I was drilling that hole out. So nothing here indicates this was ever broken. So I'm not sure what that is, but we're just gonna ignore it. All right, so we've got that sitting up on its arms. Move the jack stands out of the way. Just need to make sure we've positioned it evenly on both sides there. We're pretty close right now. Had to do a few minor adjustments on it, but that looks pretty good. So part one, at least my part, is nearly done, and it's time for Aaron to take over building the, the sidewalls. But let's get those U-bolts in and call it good. Well, folks, I'm gonna call that a completed project on my end. And now it's Aaron's turn to take over and finish it for me. Or for himself, I guess I should say. It's his car. The only thing we might need to do is put a little uh, spacer in between there to keep it from kind of, uh, when you're going down the road, from keeping from going side to side. I think otherwise, we are done with that. And I think it looks pretty, woo, pretty good behind there. Uh, don't see any issues. It seems fairly strong and not anticipating any problems with it. So thanks for watching, everybody. 
This will be part one. Part two will be up shortly within the next couple of days. Don't forget to click that notification bell so the next video I put up, which will be part two of this trailer, most likely, you won't miss out on that. We eat, breathe, sleep, live, love, and drive. Volkswagen. Catch you on the next one, folks. this before this little shaft the corners will round off eventually and my last weld repair lasted about two years so that's pretty good and I think that is probably all that's wrong with this thing so there's a square hole down in there that pin goes into and you can see it's pretty worn down so before we can cut any further I'm gonna take that out and kind of beef that up and square that off again I would just go buy a new tool rather than repair this one this one has been repaired like I said several times they don't actually make this version anymore and of course the new one is not as good as the old one. This is an RZ20 made by Bosch. Uh, so let me take that pin out of there, go repair it, and continue cutting. So what I'll do on this is, I think this whole assembly comes out of there, and then that can lift out. Yep, and we'll just go Kind of square that up a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty worn down. It lasted quite a while though that last time, so it worked. I hate repairing stuff like this because clearly that's just a design flaw. That looked really good on paper in the office and you put it into practice and it just wears out. Well, it's not a perfect repair, but that's what I've done. See if uh, fixes our issue. Now, why you would make something that needs to matter uh, not out of hardened steel? All right. Seems to be locking. I think we might have fixed it. Back to work. Fixed one issue, uh, it is locking. So there's a little button on the side here, we can test that, we can push in on that. It is locking, but there is some sort of vibration or something that is allowing the tool to just kind of shimmy. There's no way I could cut a straight line with it. Uh, the machine itself seems to be fine. So it seems to be that our issue is in the head of that. Turn on the, let's turn this on. This thing's not shimmying or shaking at all. We're just kind of... It's running smooth and there doesn't seem to be any push or pull or play uh, in here. It does feel like it's getting a little hotter than it normally does. I just hope I haven't cooked this tool. It's my favorite tool. So I think what I'm gonna do I think the issue is in this piece and it looks like it comes apart and it kind of feels like there's maybe I don't know if you can hear that or not some bearings or something in there I don't know I'm kind of bummed about this all right let's see if we can get that apart you know uh, if I do figure out what's wrong with it I'm probably likely not gonna be able to find the parts to fix it if it is something that's broke. 
never had it apart this far before. I have rebuilt that shaft, but kind of disheartening. You can still buy something similar, but it has kind of a a uh, cloth strap on it rather than the hard handle. And it's just, my dad has one. It's just not as good. I hate it when a company makes something awesome and then changes it. Just keep making the awesome thing and service it sell parts for it. I don't know if there's another, uh, maybe another screw in under that. What am I missing and why won't you come apart? Huh. Alright, let me figure that out. Sometimes it's just hard to kind of work around the camera. Can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing. Can't see the trees for the forest, whichever way you want to look at it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that could be some of the issue. No idea what that even is or how that got wrapped around there. And yeah, let me work on that. It looked like a fishing line that was all in there. And it had been there a while apparently because it's kind of melted into the into the cone there. So it was all kind of dry and there is a little bit of slop in one of those bearings. Right there. Getting a little bit of slop. It was really dry, so I gooped it up with some bearing grease and put some kind of down in the pocket where it was laying down in there before. I don't know that that's going to fix it. Um, camera battery's flashing at me. But let's put it back together and throw the battery on the charger. We'll see if that fixes you up or makes it worse. Alright, I'll put you on the charger and put that back together.